Welcome to the 43rd video in this series. We are on sub element 9 Bravo with the amateur extra licensing exam for 2024 to 2028. There's some math involved here today. Let's go ahead and get started. What is the three decibel beam width of the antenna radiation pattern shown in figure E9-1? Let's look at how easy this one is. You look for that three decibel point, negative three decibel line, and then you just draw you a little line right there. And you look at where it crosses at three decibels, and you guesstimate just a little bit. And it looks like it's about 25 degrees on both sides, and you simply add those together to get 50 degrees as your answer. Going on to question number two, let's go ahead and just go to it. What is the front to back ratio of the antenna radiation pattern shown in figure E9-1? So the front is right at zero decibels. So front to back is going to be zero minus, and whatever the back is, is not guesstimated. It's somewhat halfway in between 24 and 12, so you take the average, and that gives you about 18. So negative 18, you get 18 decibels for the front to back ratio. So those are pretty easy to figure out. You just kind of have to guess just a little bit as to where they are. On my website, this is what you get. Even if you click on it, it really doesn't give you a better picture. So on your actual exam, they may be a little bit bigger when they're printed out. So we're on to question number three, is asking you the front to side ratio. Now the side is over here. I have a nice little picture worked out for you here. Again, we're going to guesstimate. guesstimate. It's just under 12, so it might be around 14. Again, on your test, it's, it's going to be pretty easy. You should be able to count the 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 lines there and we guesstimated about 14 decibels the front still at zero so you have about a 14 decibel front to side ratio so the front is going to be 14 decibels more than the side what is the front to back ratio of the radiation pattern shown in figure e92 this is an elevation so this is over real ground, and that doesn't really mean anything to us right here. But on question number four, we'll transition over to there. You can see that basically the first lobe is at zero, and yeah, it's seven and a half degrees off. Uh, based on this, approximately 180 is somewhere around negative 28 decibels. It's just before the negative 30, so we're, we're guesstimating best we can. You can go look at the answers down below and sort of figure out, like, okay, it's about 28 decibels. So that one you can almost look at and figure out. So what type of antenna pattern is shown in figure E9-2? And we said that's elevation. So this is elevation over real ground. What is the elevation angle of peak response in the antenna radiation pattern shown in figure E9-2? And that is question number six. Well, we do the same thing. It's asking you the angle of peak response is right there at zero decibels. It is about halfway between 0 and 15, just take the average, there you go, 7.5 degrees, it's halfway to 15, 7.5 degrees. That's all the ones that I can show you how to figure out. The rest of these, you'll just memorize the answers. What is the difference in radiated power between a lossless antenna with gain and an isotropic radiator driven by the same power? They're the same. They are the same. It's just that in the antenna with gain, it's the direction that the power goes in. So that's it's the same, absolutely the same.
how is the far field or what is the far field of an antenna that's the region where the shape of the radiation pattern no longer varies with distance and that is going to be you know uh nope I don't have a picture for that one but as as you get further out from your antenna eventually the shape is not going to change anymore so just remember far field is where the shape no longer varies with distance now we're at method of moments what type of analysis is commonly used for modeling antennas that's the method of moments if you're into calculus then here you go or we could leave that up to the big dogs and easy nec most likely uses those those method of moments to figure out your antenna gain and elevation patterns and radiation patterns so this is free i've used it before a little complicated but not too bad a uh, slight learning curve method of moments so what is the principle of a method of moments analysis that is a wire is modeled as a series of segments each having a uniform value of current back to easy nec that's where you'll plug all that wonderful data in wire it's just wire modeled as a series of segments what is a disadvantage of decreasing the number of wire segments in an antenna model below 10 segments per half wavelength? The computed feed point impedance may be incorrect. So, you know, if you want a better sampling, you want a higher sample rate and smaller chunks. So, that's where you want to kind of stick to that 10 segments per half wavelength. We've made it to the end of this one. Only a few more to go. We're going to get there. I'm Robbie W1RCP. I shouldn't have to say it. Like this video. Subscribe to show your support. Thanks so much. 73.